uh, in the, the forest, you know, you've heard of Forrester Analyst Group. Uh, they put us in the upper right of their wave uh, a couple months ago. So basically we're good at that. So managed security is one thing that we do. Uh, compliance, people, a lot of people come to us for compliance. 40% of our customers start with compliance actually. Uh, and then the third thing, uh, which is a huge area, and 30 to 40% of our new customers come from this, which is cloud security. Huge area. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. Who, who uh, is currently working in their company or as a hobby or something like that with uh, Azure or with AWS? That was about 50% or more. Okay. That's a great space. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to the cloud, but there's also a huge need for security in the cloud, as we know. So, I'm going to give you a, my first story is actually relevant to the cloud. So, with this, this is a uh, particular, I know you don't see it, sorry. This is a uh, specific story. Sorry, I'm not sure why these screens are really different. Normally, I just click. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, <clears throat> this is a specific type of attack that we, uh, we prevented in the AWS space, in the cloud, okay? Uh, the same kind of idea can be applied to Azure, but this just happens to be one. These are all, the next two things that I'm doing for you are actual security successes that really happened. All we did is anonymize the company name, okay? So AWS specific attack for an IT services company, it was targeted malware, okay? So you guys have talked a little bit about that today. So, let me try and how about that button instead? This dual screen is really messing with my, <laughs> with my laptop. Is it your Mac or? No, it's a PC, but it's, oh, it's not even working at all. Huh. Um, <clears throat> it's not moving along. How's, how's that? What if we go down arrow or if we go Based, right arrow? Based on? Page down, I'll do that, sure. Move your cursor over to the monitor. Is that a flash drive by any chance? What's that? Have you done it? Flash drive? We can use his laptop, you know. Yeah, but with Mac to PC, the slides are different sometimes. Um, tell you what, what if we do this? Can we go, instead of trying to be so ambitious with, with doing two screens, Let's one go. Is good, one is good. Yes. Let's go with one because that's what's going on here. Um, which I always hate doing something I haven't tested. Here we go. This is what you want. All right. Anyway, <laughs> so AWS is a interesting uh, space. Azure is a really interesting space too. You know, you, you think, okay, well, the cloud providers are really good at security. They are. AWS has a, a famous quote, they say security is job zero, right? So that's true, but let me ask you this, with the dual screen wasn't working, gotcha. So um, how fast do you think it takes for a hacker to scan your application in the cloud? Probably <coughs> 20 seconds. Some uh, healthcare and very highly uh, specific targeted apps like that, HIPAA kind of, sort of compliant apps, yes, it can be seconds. In our, in our NOC or in our SOC, in our cloud, uh, when we put honeypot applications, which are test apps, out in, uh, thank you, yep. AWS and Azure, um, it takes eight seconds or eight uh, minutes for them to be scanned. This is pretty new information. And it takes uh, 23 minutes with sort of basic level security for them to be compromised. Uh, so, so What's happening is that people say, oh, the cloud provider is going to protect me. And that's true for what they're responsible for, but you're responsible for the application. You're responsible for configuration and a lot of other things. So people are having a little bit of a false sense of security about, um, about cloud security. So that's, that's tough, but that's, that's where we are today. Okay, yay, it works. Okay, here's a, a story of how we helped somebody with AWS. There was malware activity that we detected with our software. So what we do is we're software and people. We're actually people that watch your stuff uh, and software that watches your stuff. So we detected the malware, uh, some configuration changes detected uh, on ingress and egress in AWS security groups. Uh, within seven minutes, our, uh, the, incident, the incident was escalated and our analyst uh, was reviewing that and providing uh, you know, a phone call 
to the customer. We call the customer and walk them through how to remediate that and, and eliminate that threat. And uh, within 12 minutes, we, the advice had been uh, implemented and the threat contained. So that's, that's what, you know, speed makes all the difference when it comes to cloud security because everything is so automated. And remember, they're responsible for physical security, the cloud provider. They're responsible for basically the hypervisor and down. You're responsible for everything above that. Uh, and so that's what we help you, we help you monitor. So that's an AWS specific attack uh, that we prevented uh, or that we basically helped them to, to mitigate. Okay, so here's an advanced SQL injection attack. SQL injections are 39% of what we see. We have 4,100 customers around the world and of all the attacks that we see, SQL injections, which can be done just with tools. You don't have to be a programmer. There's tools for SQL injection. 39% uh, of what we're seeing is SQL injection related. It's happening so much that we, we now have had to use, uh, we, we basically come up, we bought a, a machine learning company uh, and for about the last year, we've been silently uh, you know, incorporating machine learning into what we do with cloud to help basically a, a speed up detection because SQL injections can be sometimes multi-month um, hacks that are not even related with the same IP address, which is how you normally you know, use a SIM and those kinds of things and do correlation. So what's happening is that you know, we're using machine learning now to help us spot things as well as you know, patterns and threat signatures and, th and things of that nature. So here's one for advanced SQL injection. So a compromise was detected through some log messages. Less than a thousand log message, uh, messages that we picked up on for the customer uh, indicating a SQL injection attack. Uh, around eight minutes, uh, the partner and the customer was notified with threat information and remediation tactics. So tell, you know, here's, here's what you should do to close that off. We have examples of small companies like law firms who don't spend much money with us where we've been on the phone with them for hours helping them to remediate and to fix a security problem because that's what we are, we're a service. We're the, we are the software, but we're the service for the human beings too. Um, after a couple of hours of further analysis, we worked with the customer and identified IDs and password hashes that were leaked. Uh, and then we stayed with them this long, uh, in, this, in this story actually, six hours, and uh, we basically helped them to, uh, to mitigate their compromised accounts. Here's what the compromised accounts were, here's what to do to shore this up in the future. So there's a couple of quick stories. I, just, I like to put stories in the beginning. Uh, I'll get a little bit more into what we do now. Uh, but any questions on the stories or on SQL injection? Um, not that that's all we cover, but it's a lot of what we're seeing right now. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Do you work in conjunction with the same tools like Splunk and Alcott, or in, are you in an augmentation? How do you do? Because they kind of do yeah. this kind of yeah. instant analysis. Absolutely. So uh, a lot of our customers have things like Splunk or, or other tools. Uh, we have our own software stack. So there may be cases where <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they have a SIM. Uh, and they have logs that they're collecting through Splunk. Um, and the reason they would talk to us, they either won't talk to us because they say, we, we've got it, we're good, you know, we're happy with Splunk, we're happy with uh, the staffing that we have, we're happy with maintaining correlation uh, in Splunk and all of that. If, if a customer's happy with that, uh, sometimes they won't, they won't even call us. Um, but what we do find sometimes is that people say Splunk is very powerful, it does a great job, but you still have to have people looking at that, going through that. Nothing in Splunk is sort of, you know, going to help you solve the security problem. It'll give you, good, it'll give you great visibility, though. Uh, so there are cases where people actually use us for, you know, a, as a backup to that so that they know there's humans looking at it all day long and all night long. Um, or some big companies have a mature SOC, but they use us for cloud. That's a pretty common one because people don't have expertise in cloud, and we do. Russell? Uh, I just wanted to ask and also add on to what uh, he was asking and also what you could also help uh, yeah. the uh, congregation here with. Uh, from what I've seen from experience is that you find I've seen Splunk grow from just a log collector to now being the same tool. And from security experience, and one thing that Raj also mentioned is that there's a, there's a real struggle with expertise. So you find people like a lot logic may have something that they put on top of on top of Splunk, so you don't have to buy the whole suite, but they maybe have a custom-made application that they put on top of that Splunk to give you a value-added uh, return for your money. 
as opposed to just going with the whole suite. Because I've been in places where you spend millions of dollars on the, a tool just sits there because you don't have the expertise to bring it. Yeah. But to bring up also, because of the, from what I've gathered and also some collection of conversations, there's also people who want to get into the security field or in security field or season in this table. So like for those who want to go into, for your eyes on the glass, what kind of skill set does a lot, a lot logic kit sure. as analysts so that people right. want to also branch into like you were saying, this is like malware analysis and stuff, yeah. be able to focus on Because now Absolutely. there's a tool of a lot logic, but yeah. also yeah. brains behind what do they yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. So what? Um, so you're right. It, it, we're we're part tools and part people, mm -hmm. just like Russell said. Um, what kind of skill sets uh, do we have to hire, train, mentor, and retain? Uh, so it's everything from firewall specialists to network security specialists to uh, application programmers to WAF experts. Um, it's uh, it's people. We actually have 60 people that do nothing but pure security research where they literally have relationships with black hats on, on the dark web and things of that nature where we're actually we're putting honeypots out in public clouds like I mentioned earlier we're seeing how those are being compromised and we're you know developing threat signatures as well as behavior understanding of what the trends are with that so it's a combination of original threat researchers like that your network security your application security your firewall experts log experts one of the most um, challenging things to do with for example, logging um, is that you know getting you know, uh, you know parsing that information. So what we have is we have 4,000 log parsers and counting all the time. Actually, I think it's 4,500 right now. Uh, where it's automatic, you know, we automatically parse that for you. But then we have people that are trained to actually look at those logs for the customer. So with, the problem with Splunk is that it's taking in this you know volume of data and it's it's excellent. No complaint about Splunk at all. But it's taking in a lot, and then the expertise is the challenge expertise and time. Security experts have to focus on remediation, so solving security problems, company training, maintaining tools, patching tools, buying tools, vendor management. Instead, what we do instead is that we, we own the software stack and the people and we just watch it for you. So that's a little bit of a different approach. But yeah, we have to maintain a lot of types of expertise uh, to do that for customers. Yeah. So is this for only uh, cloud services or any on-prem services? On-prem as well. But yeah. is the data moving to the cloud for analysis? So what we do is the threat information that we see. So incidents uh, is looked at in our cloud uh, across a 4,100 and counting right now, uh, multi-tenant, you know, massive multi-tenant uh, in the cloud. So because of that, what we can do is we have a big data lake with, with 16 petabytes of information. Uh, of threat of, of threat trends that we're seeing, and we basically have the machine now machine learning, which goes through the data lake and identifies patterns and things of that nature. Now, I'm trying to understand yeah. what information is passed to the cloud for analysis. Yeah. yeah. Is it um, like is it just the so for for example for for packets? Uh, I, I'm, I'm this is a little bit more technical than I go. Just yeah, just, no, no, just 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 for me. Uh, but I bl I've heard people say like you know header information and, and things of that nature, uh, or uh, you know stuff like that. So we could take that kind of thing to an, another conversation to go a little bit deeper because I'm kind of the I'm the sales side of it. So I know I know about this much, this deep that much. Um, this is a question you can't answer. Yep. <laughs> no, you can. C A N. Okay. Um, the size of the uh, IT infrastructure. What's the average size that you guys are working with? So we work with um, tra traditionally mid-sized companies have enough revenue that it's really important to protect, but they cannot staff for security. So mid-sized companies flock to us. But what we're finding is that large companies are now bringing us in. For example, a, a healthcare provider, a, I can't, really can't mention the I want to, um, but there's somebody who you, you, all of you guys use their healthcare products. Um, they brought us in because they have a mature SOC for on-prem, but for the cloud, they're like, we don't have any expertise. Executives are mandating that we're gonna go cloud, right? And so we wanna bring in Alert Logic because you're good at that. And so we're, we're their SOC for the cloud. So with mid-sized company, we could be everything, and with some large companies, there's actually the 15th largest bank in the world. We're we're their whole sock. We're everything for them, end to end. So so big companies sometimes do use us for the full end to end security, but usually it's mid sized companies that use us for full end to end, and big companies use us for cloud. 
for their cloud park because that's a, such a new area for us to take off their plate. Y'all are awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I wanted to give you guys some, uh, some, some facts about some things that we're seeing. So because, we, because it's a multi-tenant environment, and we, we can study what, what the attack patterns are. So this is some interesting attack pattern information. Uh, one, kind of the one thing I wanted to show you on this, and I'm happy to send Deb the slides, by the way. But on-premise, look at the application attacks, okay? The application attacks on-premise are 18%, okay? Now, look at the brute force. On-prem, the brute force attacks, and this is from actual incidents and, and, and hacking information from our tracking, from our own customers. Um, brute force on premises is 51%. Okay, now look at what happens over here. With the cloud environment, the application attacks, which is the area in the cloud you're responsible for, hackers know this stuff. Look at how much it grew from 18% application attack on prem to 42% application attack. It's from our own data, this is recent, uh, in the cloud, AWS and Azure. But now, what did we say earlier that the cloud provider is responsible for? The hypervisor and down. So hardware, networking, hypervisor, all of that, okay? So check this out. On-prem, you were responsible for that, so they were doing a lot of hacking on you with brute force on-prem. But look, they're not successful and they're not trying as much in the cloud because that's in the, in, in the cloud provider's shared security model. They're such good experts at security that um, they're able to protect you from brute force and also hackers aren't, aren't trying. But hackers are trying to go after what you're responsible for in the cloud, which is your apps. Any questions or thoughts on that? Did you have one? No. How do you get the basis of these numbers? So we, because, because we're a multi-tenant security provider, we can study the trends and we, we categorize every attack that we see. Every incident that we see, we actually tag it with different properties like this was SQL injection and, and, and you know, or this was, this was on-prem, this was cloud, that kind of thing. So we do, we have some tags and markers that we do for our security incidents. So because of that, we can roll it up into insights like this. And the one that really struck me the most is that when you move to the cloud or, or when you move an app to the cloud, it's so different what the attack pattern is, and it's scarier because it's the one thing that they do, they specifically tell you they don't cover, which is application security. So it's important to know. So it's kind of an industry thing. I, some of the rest of my stuff is, is about alert logic, but I want to give you some security insights about some stuff that we're seeing. Any more questions on that? Yeah. So, so I guess it's concerned the same whether it's a SaaS app or it's zero app. No, SaaS apps are different. This is okay. infrastructure as a service. This is AWS and Azure. Nice. Or it could be Rackspace. We cover Rackspace, uh, software, a bunch, bunch of stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so. yeah. PaaS is a little bit different. And then SaaS is actually, and I don't want to give you a false sense of security, but SaaS is usually pretty secure because they own the app. They own everything, you know, top to bottom. SaaS is pretty Did good. You look at that in your, your monitor? We don't even look at it. Okay. No. So this is a yeah. number, the cloud provider that has considered in a sense. This yeah. number as both came from yeah. both from uh, the provider perspective as well as the application user's perspective, or it is only the provider perspective. Uh, this comes from our security monitoring that we do for customers, um, and we we track with every incident. What you know was it an on-prem uh, environment that we were we were monitoring for a customer? Was it was it in cloud? Um, what was the kind of attack, that kind of thing. So this is from real customers, and it's not from a provider perspective, it's from a customer perspective. Yeah. I think that was a long way of me getting to your answer. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> Keep so, me honest. So basically, what the, they're always looking for the low-lying fruit. The they are. Cats. See, do you see so what he that's, said? That's the, that's the difference in the cloud. So on-prem, all of you are low-lying <laughs> fruit. All right? Maybe there's some of you who are have a great advanced SIM, and you're paying for security analysts 24-7. By the way, do you know how many, to get 24-7, do you know how many analysts you have to have? We, we talk about breaks and time off and, and the, you know, three shifts. I mean, for, for a company, you probably have to have 10 people to have a 24-7 
security operations center. It's very, very difficult. So he's right. What they're doing is hackers are going after softer targets. And they know your apps in the cloud are 100% your responsibility. Remember what I said in the beginning, which is that when we put fake apps, which we call honeypots, we put test apps in AWS and Azure, they're scanned in eight minutes. And with basic level security installed, because we want them to get broken into, but with basic security, they're compromised in 23 minutes. And by the way, that is double the speed of what it, what it was not long ago. So he's right. They're attacking soft targets. So it's just important to know. So, you know, there's and great tools like Silence. I, I hear a lot of good about that, by the way, uh, in the marketplace. Always hear a lot of good things about that. Um, so there's, the, you know, a layered defense approach is a, is a great, great, great way to go. But I have heard good, good things about that. And we don't compete at all, <laughs> which is also nice. Um, okay, have you guys heard of the Code Spaces story? Raise your hand if you heard of Code Spaces and what happened to them. Sweet, I got a totally new audience on this one. This is getting around a bit. Uh, this is probably a year old now. There's a customer by the name of, and I'm not picking on AWS. They do a great job. Um, but there's a company by the name of Code Spaces that would actually be your enterprise code repository, and it was a safe place for your code. Okay. So you're a programmer, or, and really it's big, big companies would use it as their code repository called Code Spaces. I think they're based in Europe. Well, they uh, did not have, they only had one account in, uh, in, in AWS, and it, they did not have multi-factor authentication turned on in their one account. And there's some other background that's a little bit more technical than I go um, that, can tell, that can fill out that story for you. Just go read about Code Spaces and you can learn more. Um, but multi-factor authentication wasn't turned on, and I believe they had their information with full API access to their account in a GitHub repository, and a hacker found how to get in through that. I believe is what happened with that. I know, gives you chills. Um, uh, the hacker presented, you know, got in there, locked him out of their own account, presented him a demand for like six bitcoins. I think it was twenty grand or something like that. And uh, they said, no, you know, we're not, you know, they didn't respond. They said, we can, we can lock him out. So he went around and deleted everything in their account, deleted, and remember the whole business is in cloud, um, deleted their S3 backups and, de and, you know, deleted everything out. And they, they called Amazon and said, hey, we need to help you. We need your help because, you know, the, all this stuff got deleted and it was unrecoverable because, it's, again, it's your responsibility. You remember that? The application is your, and the data really is your responsibility of how you secure it, how you configure that. Code Spaces literally went out of business from this. So this is how important it is to uh, to be secure. By the way, all of you know what multi-factor authentication is. It's really important to use that on your uh, your your master account in Azure and AWS. Use multi-factor authentication. It's just a great you know uh, you know sort of a firewall approach to to keeping that safe. So code spaces, check Google that. Now, the percentage of businesses that go out of business because they get any sort of um, any, any sort of thing, not just the cloud, isn't it about one third? Can you say that again? When anything happens to your data in, in your business, yeah, it's your well, one in three chance of a lot of business. Yeah, I, I I take you at your word on that. Yeah. Whether it's a fire or yeah, or just losing. Your yeah. server, you know, the drive to go. Your data is everything. It's your revenue. It's your customer. It's everything. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna go a little bit quickly because uh, the rest of it is kind of about us and not so much about teaching stuff. Um, I want to spend a little bit more on the teaching. Um, so just very very quickly, it is challenging to do 24/7 security. Period. I'm done with this slide. Right? Security tools are complicated, hard to use, expensive, human expertise. Good luck finding, if you're a mid-sized company or even a mid to large company, good luck even finding 10 security analysts that you can hire and afford and retain them. Um, and then keep them trained and everything too. And then th threat intelligence is, is very important, a very important part of your strategy. No one has time for this right here, right? Your average companies are do not, unless it's JP Morgan, do not have people that do just do security research, just original security research. Doesn't happen, even in large companies. So what we do, guys, is we're AlertLogic human monitored, SaaS delivered security. That means that we update it for you. And, and, uh, and all this says is that we're good at it. Um, all this says is that for cloud, and I, by the way, guys, I know I've emphasized cloud infrastructure security because 
30 to 40 percent of our new customers are Azure and AWS right now, or Rackspace, any of the cloud providers, okay? But we work everywhere, on-prem, we started on-prem, uh, but we're really good over here with um, cloud infrastructure and security. So just to let you know that, that was a survey that came out. I already said we work wherever we do, resides. Um, so what we do is, um, you know, deep and responsive 24-7 uh, security people that help you, give you advice, tell you when there's a threat. Literally, it's phone calls. So there's a, uh, a retailer that is based somewhere in Frisco or Plano or Allen or somewhere up here, okay, somewhere in this area. There's a retailer that I... <laughs> I'm not telling you who it is. Um, actually, you know what? Now I'm not telling you the story. Because you think you know. Forget that. All right, there's a DFW city that I work with. How's that? Uh, there's a, gov a city government that I work with. And, you know, cities have limited, limited funds. But this particular city has a lot of uh, employees. And they had a malware come in. Uh, it affected a workstation because someone clicked on an email as they, as they do. Uh, it spread to, you know, three or four other machines. And it, it spread to a server. Um, we picked it up, we called them, and they shut those machines off. We, we stopped it so quickly that it didn't generate a demand from the hacker for financial as ransomware, didn't gen generate the financial demand. So this is a real story of, of how we're helping. When, we, when I say deep and responsive, they call you. I mean, this is actually people, it's not just software, it's people that uh, work with you. It's security solutions designed to work together. Uh, and it, it eliminates the inherent weakness of SIMS, which was what Russell was talking about earlier, which is that Splunk and all the, the good tools that are out there, they do a great job. Seriously, they do. No complaint. Never heard, you know, other than I have heard Splunk can be difficult to maintain. That's the only thing maybe I've heard, but I've heard it's very powerful. Um, but the problem is that you still need people to watch them, and maintain them, and watch them. And so that's the only, only challenge, and that's what we've gone after. Uh, you know, what we do is we reduce the need to hire and retain expensive in-demand security staff, save tens of thousands of dollars a month uh, in your staffing, and yet have a better threat posture. There's a, a retailer, you're not gonna trick me again. Um, there's a retailer in the Northwest, and that's really all you're gonna get. Um, but this particular retailer uses us, it's just like Russ was saying, they have a, a mature SOC environment, and they use us for the cloud. It's such a common thing for big companies to do with us. Um, but this particular retailer, you know, they've got you know 24 seven SOC. And we just monitor their, uh, in, this case, in this case, it's AWS. And so that, that's what, what's happening is that they're, they're saving money and they're gaining expertise in the, in the cloud security. Um, but also, you know, security professionals, and I, I know a lot of you know this, but some, some might not if you're kind of emerging into the security industry. Part of your job, guys, is education. You have to teach and challenge others in IT and executives on the things that they need to be looking for. Part of it is, it is a teaching uh, sort of activity. Part of it is remediation. Part of it is proactive analysis. The stuff that Roger was talking about earlier was awesome. Part of that is some very proactive analysis that you need to be doing in security. So what we do is we take sort of the, the mundane, the tough, the boring part, which is looking at that stuff all day long and calling you. And then when, when we call you, we might have gone through 30 million events and we're gonna call you with the one that matters. Instead of the snow, did you know? So Target Hack, Target Hack, mm -hmm. did you know that they tried to sue FireEye? Okay, they brought FireEye to court to sue them, and FireEye brought in ten thousand alerts of of security um, events that FireEye had actually caught the Target Hack. They had it's a good tool, right? The problem is that that's ten thousand events, and it just became a, a, like a snow blindness for Target. And they looked past it and they somehow missed it. I don't know how you missed 10,000 events on it still. Uh, but that's the point is that all the tools give off alerts and they give off information. It's your job to take that and do something with that. So alert logic basically takes the 10,000 and we'll call you with, with one deduped incident and walk you through how to remediate that. Rush. So where are the security monitoring operations in the US or is it uh, outsourced? We have two. We have two. We, own all, we don't outsource it. It's all ours. Um, but we have uh, Houston, Texas is our SOC. Uh, and then we have a SOC in Cardiff, Wales uh, as well for kind of the follow the sun as well as for European kind of purposes. So nothing on site? Um, uh, nothing on site. That's right. Yep.
Okay, this is good. All right, I'm going to probably wrap it up. I'll probably give you this slide and then I might be done. So just the, the way, is that is it okay? Okay. Buy back a couple minutes. Um, so the way this really works from a, uh, a solution standpoint is that we have tools. So we have web applications that we monitor for you. Most apps are web apps these days, but uh, you know, web applications, websites, that kind of thing. Uh, log data and then uh, packets from your network. Uh, and then also uh, we have very specific uh, in-cloud, cloud-native uh, collectors uh, as well. All of that data, okay, goes into the, like he was asking about earlier, into our data collection, into our big data analytics platform, where we run across, you know, industry uh, threat signatures, our threat signatures, original research we've done, as well as now machine learning, uh, and then we use all the, the, the security content that we have, and then it basically creates lists of suspects that our uh, analysts look at. Our analysts, by the way, how many, uh, an incident means like a, a verified sort of hack, how many incidents do you think of a, a large Houston-based oil